Lads, what I thought I'd do is go through uh, some of my kit that uh, attack when uh, I go up on the hills on the fell walking. Uh, I say it's completely different kit to uh, the bushcraft camping side things that I'd, uh, I've been doing lately. But uh, as I say, I try and get it as light as I possibly can. Because when you're going up steep gradients, uh, every ounce counts, or even every gram counts. So I'll just go through bits and pieces. This is my cooker. This is called uh, the white box stove. I got this from Backpacking Light. I say go on their website. Uh, that weighs 30 grams. Uh, it's a alcohol stove, but it's a fierce little thing, so I'll just go through this with you. Now what you've got to do with this, you've got to let it bloom before you can put the, your kettle or your, your pot on top, you've got to let it bloom and with this white box stove you get the uh, tin file thing and they're just two very large paper clips so okay that's bloomed now I don't think you'll be able to see it because there's a daylight but the flames are coming right out of the side My pot, incidentally, uh, that I use is a uh, titanium part of the solo kit, also from Backpacking Light. I say I don't tend to use a cup bit because when I'm just going out, I usually just brew up and take solid food or pot noodles, where again, where you just pour the water into to the to their thing. So I tend to just to use brews out of this, and what I'll do is uh, I'll just put a coffee straight into the boiling water. Uh, so this is how I use this system, and the weight of that is about 100 grams. Um, I think it's a 600 mil pot. But as I say, with that cooker, it's super lightweight. Uh, so that's me cook system. Uh, I say I'll take you through army kit and uh, I say I'm not going to go up the hills uh, but I will set it up in a place where I do my hammocking and I'll show you it all set out. Ok lads, I don't know if you can see down there, I'll say that this cocker is basically made for wide pots and it works better with wide pots but I just I just use it on this the only thing that I have to do is on these handles here I make sure the rubber is well out of the way I say because it I say it does shoot up the side because it's basically made for wide pots but it's a powerful cooker and it's lightweight I say we're nearly at the boil now And then I use you can see that it's like a, a spark thing, a titanium spark. That's a Tibetan but loads of companies doing them. And it's good for you can eat your pot noodles and also you can make your your brews. So we're virtually there now. And the bile. In a couple of minutes, about a couple of sorry, or 30 seconds, and we should be on. And uh, also, just for interest, I carry my fuel in a 
Paul House Nalgene bottle. And I've worked it out. Four ounces will give you approximately six to eight brews, depending on wind conditions. There's a proper boil now. So I'll stop you there. See, there's a flame off that white box stove. It's just, I've got it that accurate now. I know with 300 mils of water, it's just about half ounce of fuel or slightly more. As I say, uh, it's all practice and error, lads. You know, the more you do it, the better you get. I use these Nescafe green ones. They're all right for me. Some people don't like them. I find they're adequate for me. I say I'm a tea drinker, but when I go on the hills, I just take coffee just for convenience. And all I do is I pour that straight into there. Good stir, lads. And I drink straight from that mug now. That's, so that's my cooking system. I drink from that mug if I'm making a pot noodle. I obviously pour the hot water into the pot noodle. Uh, and I say foods I take up is high fat foods, high energy foods. Because you burn hell of a lot of calories when you're on the tops. So I try and keep my kit as light as possible. So next I'll take you on to my sleeping bag. Okay. Sleeping bag I use is a a Marmot hydrogen. It's called. Uh, it's supposed to go down minus one. I think I've only been at minus one a couple of times. As I say, I have winter bags, uh, mountain equipment winter bags. So I just usually use this for the summer and spring, and probably early autumn. Uh, late autumn and winter I go into me, me thingy bags, me um, winter bags. So this is a, a down bag. It's, I think it's 850 plus down. Uh, let me just see. thought it was on the label but it's not. But it's an 850 plus down. Uh, I don't know what kind of down, as long as it keeps me warm, I'm not particularly bothered. Uh, Anti-snag zips, YKZ, K zips, anti-snag, uh, baffled. I say it does a job, it, uh, it's warm. The weight of it's about, I'm not too sure, but I know it's under 800 grams. I think it's about 7, 740, 750 grams. Uh, I say I'll get it in its. Uh, I, I keep it in a a dry bag. I haven't got a stuff sack for it, but the dry bag I can get it quite small. So I'll get it in that and show you that. In that. Okay, lads. Uh, sleeping bags in its stuff sack now, and with the weight of the stuff sack, it's seven hundred and seventy-three grams. Uh, I put it into a Cetus Summit eight litre. to summit eight litre stuff what well not stuff so waterproof uh, bag so that's a sleeping bag so that was 773 grams probably 20 grams for the bag so about 750 grams okay lads there's my rucksack and that's got everything in that I would take for an overnight hike on the tops, fells, i.e. the Lake District, Wales, Scotland. I say it hasn't got my winter bag in so it's more like a two season, summer, late spring, early autumn. So the only thing I haven't got in there is food, water. So this is just a basic weight of everything that I take. So I say it's a it's a 
OMM, original Mountain Marathon, classic 25. I think it comes in about 600 grams. And the actual weight of all my kit, I put it on my fishing scales, don't know if you can see that. Going a bit closer, but it's bang on seven pound. See that on the white. So there's six pound. Let's see if we can get it a bit closer. Twelve, seven pound. So obviously that's without food and water, and obviously the clothes that I carry on my person. And that's without waterproofs. Uh, so, let's say it's seven pound weight. So what I'll do, I'll take you to the field, get it all set up, uh, and show you all the pieces of equipment as you, you would actually use them. All right, see you in a bit. <coughs> Right lads, I'm just going to show you how I, how I get my water, what filter they use. As I say, I only really use a filter when I'm up high. Uh, usually if I'm camping out the car, I take water with me. Uh, but this is, this is how I do it. I'll uh, show you everything, mate. Right, look how well you can see me there. This is, uh, I'll have to shout up. I use Catadine Rocket. Now, when we weighed the pack and the seven pound, this one in it. So, this weighs about a pound and a half, lads. So, we're up to about eight and a half, nine pound with this. Kadine, the writing's rubbed off, Kadine rocket, and a pocket, sorry, and all that you do is pump, now I've put that part on it, which is a carbon filter, just to take the taste away, you're alright drinking straight from here, but just to take the taste away, I put that on the carbon filter. I'm just going to put it straight into the mug, lads. All that I do, you get a thingy end with a pre-filter and then a bit of thing to keep it what depth you want it. And just throw that in. And I just do a few squirts just to clean the filter out and then we're straight in then it's about a litre a minute so they say about a litre a minute Just to prove, lads, you know, it's all right. Don't worry about it. And, and with this carbon thing, it just tastes like bottled water. Beautiful. So I'll put some more in for me brew, and then I'll show you myself.
back off. So that's a K down pocket filter. Okay lads, right, I've set me the bivvy bag I use. I have got just ones that you crawl in. Uh, but I got this because as I say when I was when you're up at the top so weather can change in literally minutes, honestly it can. And I wanted a bit more headroom. I didn't like the idea of just being rolled up in a little bivy bag. If you know the weather's going to be fine, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, as I say, a lot of them put the sleeping mats inside. I find it too restrictive. But in this one, I can get my sleep mat inside and I've got plenty of room, plenty of room. As I say, I'll just take you around the features. Uh, just before I point out, this is a a Valde, it's called the Valde Vive. Now they've changed, they've changed it. They still make, they still make it, but they've uh, added extra features on. I'll go through them. Now this is a hoop Vive, so you get the two poles, and obviously they just all cross into each other, and you peg it out there. It's got a Sorry. It's got a vent there which allows air flow in or you can zip that off completely. I just leave it open, allows air flow in uh, and I say I've been out in torrential weather with it and it's never come in. It's got a zip mozzy net there and it also allows, allows it a bit of breathability. You can, it has a, a virtually full length zip that comes from under there all the way down and it has a good two inch, two inch flap on the zip lads so as I say I've never had any leaking in it but I, believe me I've been out in some rain. You can roll it up and you can roll it to there and tie it up. The foot end as again, you have a little pole in and you know you can, it has like a little vent that end so it allows air flow uh, and you peg that down. So I'll just unzip it now and what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll blow my air mat up and I'll show you, I'll get the sleeping bag out and I'll show you how I, how I use it. Oh, some facts about it, it's uh, the waterproofness, or how they say, it's 7,000 on the top. How they rate waterproofness is 7,000 millimetres before the material leaks. I don't know how they do it. They put it in a chamber, fill it with water, and then that's how the pressure of the water forces it to leak. So it's 7,000 on the top, and the base is 10,000. So it's pretty high spec. It's not the lightest in the world, it weighs in about 850 grams, but for what you get, I think it's superb. I'll just tell you the difference between this and the new one, the Mark II, is this is just a one opener, so you can only get in one way. On the Mark II, it's, or the Bivy II, I think we've called it, you can, it's got another zip down the other side there, so you can open them both ways. Uh, I found this alright, and the other thing about the Mark II that I really like, it's got a built-in mosquito net, so on a fine night, you can have it rolled right up, and just just have the mozzy net. Now, the, the, the things I use this for, Mozzies are never a problem because I'm usually above two and a half thousand feet and you know they're just not there at that altitude so I've not had a problem. On a fine night I just pull the door right up and look at the stars, go to sleep and superb. 
but I found this kit absolutely superb. So I'll put the sleeping bag in and I'll put uh, my mat in, my pillar in, I'll show you exactly how I have it. So see you in a minute. Okay lads, right, I'm going to go through exactly how I have it. Um, remember all this packs into me 25 litre rucksack and so top layer top layer oh by the way there, there it is clipped up and that's usually how I have it on a good warm night so top layer my sleeping bag as I say I went through that before that's my marmot one degree down sleeping bag underneath that this is a a Thermarest NeoAir and it's a small size. I say it just covers my head, well, my head, shoulders and down to say like my knees, which I find adequate. That's 260 grams, lads, if you're interested. Underneath that, I have two layers. Two layers, one because I have this insulation car windscreen thing and a pound from my local pound shop i say that that goes right up to the top uh, goes right up to there and the actual curve of it suits this baby perfect and it goes well past me uh me bed mat and why do i put that in one because it adds warmth it bounces heat right up and two I want to protect this, this uh, Neo Air. I'm paranoid, it looks flimsy, but believe me, it's strong as anything. When I first got it, I thought, oh God, that's gonna pop. And I've had it, God, ooh, two years now, maybe 18 months, two years, and I bet I've slept on it about 100, 120 times, approximately, lads, and it's been perfect. But I am paranoid about punctures, so I've never slept without this. Uh, now this is a really thick, I think it's uh, designed to go across your windscreens uh, and uh, you know to stop the ice forming and I always have it in my pack, it folds up, it slips down the bottom of my pack uh, as I say that's the OMM Classic 25 litre but also in these uh, packs you get another little uh, thing I don't know what it's called, it's like a little foam black thing and I saw that's in the pack always and this is in the pack always and I think that's part of the back support system and it is designed to be used as a little sleep mat now I can't see that giving you any insulation properties whatsoever it's about two mil thick uh, but it's in the pack and it's all part of the weight so I put it down then I put that down then my Neo Air and I put my rucksack I shoved my rucksack in that Edwell and another pound bag in I put my pillar and that's just a blow up pillar and you know pound so a pound for that a pound for the silver reflective thing uh, and that's my sleep system and but, believe me lads I've been out in torrential torrential rain and you know it's been all right now the other thing that I do use with this now I don't think I'll be able to get it up because I usually have uh, when I'm going up I have two walking poles and I forgot my uh, paracord but what I'll do, I'll show you how I have it. It won't look the nicest of setups, but it's just so I can cook under without it. If it's torrential down, I can just cook, and it's a, it's a micro tarp from Backpacking Light. And what I'll do, I'll just put it up how I have it. Uh, I'll say I can't put it up proper because I haven't. I forgot my poles. I haven't brought any paracord. I'll just show you and then you'll get the idea. As I say lads, I forgot my poles uh, and my paracord. So what I'll do, I'll just hold it up and 
hopefully you'll get the idea that when it's absolutely lagging it down I've just got a little bit of space to cook uh, so I'll just hold it up and show you It's just like that lads and I'd attach a pole to there, pole to the other side and it just gives me a little bit of a uh, thing so I can cook under the, the outside. Alright lads. <laughs> Right lads, just going to go through a couple of the reasons why I use a ooped bivy rather than the one you just crawl into. Well, first one is dead obvious, more room. Second is you're totally, totally protected. Uh, third is you can lie on your side. As I say, if you ever tried putting a sleep mat inside a bivy, uh, I find it very uncomfortable, very, very uncomfortable. As I say, I've got bivy bags that yeah, but I never, ever put the sleep mat inside. Some say you can, but I find it very uncomfortable, too restrictive for me. As I say, I like my comfort. Uh, so this hoop bivy gives me what I need. It's lightweight, all right, it's 850 grams, 900 grams, so it's not ultra lightweight, uh, as I say, uh, that sheet that you've just seen me put over the bivy that I use for cooking, if I know the weather's going to be absolutely spot on, I have a bivy bag that weighs about 300, 300 odd grams, 320 grams, and I take that sleeping bag, which is my marmot hydrogen, I can't praise that enough, it's absolutely superb. Um, as I say, if, it, if the weather's superb, and I know it's going to be superb, I'm up on the tops. See, what you've got to realise, lads, is when you're up on the tops, it's taking two hours, three hours to get up the tops. So if you do come a cropper, or the weather turns foul, I know in this bivy, I can sit it out. You know, I've sat it out until the next day. I've actually had to dig myself out on a couple of occasions with snow. And uh, and I've been bone dry in there lads. Absolutely bone dry and warm. That Neo Air, it looks flimsy but it's something else. And as I say, with that uh, reflective car windscreen thing and the pad underneath that's part of the rucksack, I've been warm. And believe me, I've been warm. And as I say, if I know it's going to be really, really cold, I have a heavier bag which takes me pack up to about... It's seven pound without the water thing. Say nine pound with the water filter. You can get lighter water filters, but that water filter is guaranteed for 20 years or 25 years. I'm not too sure. And that's with the same filter. You don't have to keep replacing the filters. So it should see me out. Um, Alright, it's a bit bulkier, but it's, it's bulletproof, lads. It's bulletproof. A buy gear wants me, and hopefully it lasts a lifetime to look after it. I say the... Uh, so, getting back to when the weather can turn. If it's going to be really, really nice, I'm not going up so high, I'll just take that little micro tarp and a little 300 gram bivy bag. So... I get my weight down to five and a half, six pound. But as I say, I always set that water filter with me because I don't like the idea of carrying six pound of water when I can carry that that's a pound and a half and just fill up as I go. As I say, where I usually go in the Lake District or Wales or wherever on the tops is there's always, always a, a tarn or a street, you know, supply of water. Uh, but do filter it. Sorry about that lads, my memory were full. As I was saying, yeah, uh, water filters, you know, <laughs> some people don't rely on them, uh, but tell you an instance, I was climbing, uh, well, fell walking 
up onto one of the fells in the Lake District, I can't remember. It was one of the northern fells, one of the less isolated. Anyway, um, we stopped at this stream and uh, my mate said, oh, look at that, it's gorgeous. I'll just get it. I said, whoa, hang on. Got my water filter out, pumped into his bottle. I said, drink that now. And after about half an hour, he, uh, we turned up this, like the path turned a sharp turn and bang. The beginning of the stream, or the start of it, dead sheep, and that was about 1800 foot up. As I say, after about 2000 feet, you don't really see the sheep, but that one was quite high up. So, all right, you might have got away with it, but you could have had some nasty stomach bug there. Uh, now, I don't know uh, how bad it'd be, but I don't want to take the chance, so I use a filter end of you know that's that's my philosophy and uh, i used to have a filter and as i say about three years ago i was up the lakes every weekend and here there every other weekend i used to stay out for three or four nights at a time and uh, this is the kit i had as i say uh, i didn't have the neo air then uh, i had another one but from the last two years i've used a neo air uh, sleeping bag I've had about four or five years uh, the bivvy I've had about six years I say they've changed the bivvy now called the bivvy 2 so I don't know if you can still get this I'm not too sure but as I say uh, this is a kit I use lads and the weight even with the water filter is under nine pound guaranteed and that's everything you've, you've seen here the little micro tarp, my sleeping bag, my sleep mat, the silver foil reflector thing, the pad underneath, my pillar, my rucksack, uh, my cooking gear. Uh, that's without food or water though. As I say, food another four or five pound. Water, I get it as I need it. Uh, so you're looking well under 15 pound. And it's a breeze, you know. But as I say now, I've got into the bushcraft side of it and it's just a totally different scenario. But as I say, this is a kit I use and I'll just run through uh, the bits and pieces. So there's my sleeping bag, the Marmot, Hydrogen, Data Minus One. And I say it can go down to that. This is a Thermarest Neo Air Small. As I say, I don't know the full length of it, but it's adequate for me, and it works. Underneath that, sorry about the light there lads. Underneath that I put my Pound Shop windscreen silver reflector foil. As I say, that is rock solid that. Uh, I always, I never use it without the uh, Neo Air because this is, it takes something to go through that anyway. And then lastly underneath that, is that little thing that uh, goes in the rucksack. Now that's supposed to be a sleep pad. You know, it's for these marathon runners who do the overnight events and I wouldn't ever use it I'd rather get the other 260 grams and uh, use a Neo Air but each to his own as I say they're doing it for an event so I'm not I'm doing it for pure pleasure next my pillar a pound if it gets wrecked, not bothered, just go and get another one, pound shot. So there's two pound on my pillar and my silver foil windscreen thing. My rucksack is an OMM 25 litre classic. And this black uh, thing goes in the back here. You, 
you've got two compartments here. One's for the call it the duo mat that slides down the back and this one here slides down there. That's where I put the silver foil, uh, the silver windscreen thing. It's supposed to be for the bladder. You can have a bladder on this pack. Uh, as I say, I never really bother with them. But that's the pack. Uh, the OMM 25 litre. Weighs about 600 grams, 650, something like that. But always that I know is the old kit comes in under seven pound. Next, that's um, my micro tarp. As I say, that's about 140 grams, maybe 150. Uh, as I say, I usually have that over the Ute Bivet for cooking. Um, then we come to, say I'm going to make a brew, then we come to my my pot and that's uh, my cooker so the cooker is a white box stove 30 grams and my pot is a ever new titanium solo set there's the lid Sorry about the shakiness lads. There's a lid and I put it in a little pot cosy thing there. Uh, as I say, that is perfect for one, for me. I just put the coffee straight into that and brew into that. And also, if I take a pot noodle, pour the hot water in the pot noodle. Uh, so there's a windshield. The windshield comes with the white box stove. The only addition I've put, if you can see, is two really big paper clips. And that holds a windshield perfect round that. And then I've got me my little uh, sport, they call titanium sport, Tibetan, that make is, but um, you know, you can get them from anywhere. Most of this stuff, lads, I got from Backpacking Light. Pound shops. Uh, the only thing I got, I got the um, the Marmot sleeping bag from Go Outdoors. We have a Go Outdoors about five or six miles from us in stop, but maybe about eight miles, sorry. And that was reduced. It should have been... £180 and I got it for I think I got it for £106 in one of their sales and that's all they seem to have the sales another one I got from Go Outdoors was the Valdi Biver now this was a bargain this was 50% off uh, from £120 and I got it for £60 quid. as I say they don't seem to stock it anymore whether you can get it online I don't know but that was a bargain of the century that and uh, there was only one left, uh, as I say, so I just, I just got it, and it, it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You know, I wish I would have done some videos, uh, I didn't have my phone then, so I wish I would have done some videos of some of the weather that I've been in with it, just to show you. So there's all my kit, lads. As I say, I'm going to show you that uh, water filter in a bit more detail. Okay lads, just before I show you the water filter, let me just show you this little power pack. Uh, this is what I use to charge my phone, as I say, if I'm away for a few days and that's what I use. I'll go, I'll just show you this bloomed. As I say, that's a white box stall ready for the thingy, the pot on now. So we're just going to get a brew going. And I'll, I'll just come back to it. Yeah, this is a power pack. I think I got it off Amazon. I think it was 19.99, and that will recharge my iPhone four full times. What I do, I just have to fully charge this on the computer. And as I say, my iPhone, uh, I recharge. It'll recharge it fully four times. I'll let it run virtually to nil, and then put that in, usually overnight, leave it charging. Bang, and it will do that four times lads 
Now, I use my iPhone not only for videos and for my sat nav, but when you're up on the hills or you're in a place and you, you know, I always check OS maps. Well, I don't check the full map. What I do is I print out the part I need. If I know I'm only going to there, say like Upper Fell, and I'm going to do that route, uh, I just check that part of the map I need. Now, what I use my iPhone for, which I can't show you, but uh, I think is one of the best products in the world for OS uh, GPS positioning, and it's called View Ranger. Now, I, what you do is you download it. I think it's about 14 quid, and then you have to buy the maps. So with that 14 quid, you get so many credits, and then what it'll do is allow you to download OS maps at 125th or 125,000 scale. That's the scale you want, lads. Don't bother with the 150th. The 125,000 scale give you more detail and show you uh, actual paths and you know buildings and everything where you exactly are. Now, what this does is it'll show you exactly as an OS map, but it'll also track your position, tell you your altitude, how many minutes you've been walking. And it'll tell you multiple things and plus how I work it is while I'm at home and it cannot it automa it sends a signal back to my house on my computer to show my partner where I am. And so if anything happened untoward because usually when you're up on the tops you can't get a phone signal now the GPS has always been brilliant because it's a totally different kind of technology than a phone signal so my partner knows where I am uh, now if for some reason it was during the day and I fell and I couldn't get a signal now my partner would look at that and she'd know, right, he's not moved for three hours here, or whatever, and she'd know something was up. As I say, when I'd done the Pembrokeshire coast, it automatically updated my tracking at home and told me all the information about everything. So it's a brilliant product, it's called View Ranger. Uh, check it out, guys. As I say, that's boiling now. What with that? I bet that was less than three minutes. That's boiling now. I say this stove is brilliant. It's 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 meant for wide bodies, but I use it perfect for this. And as I say, the jets on it are something else, lads. So I'm just going to cut you off there, and have a brew, and then I'll come back and talk about that water filter. Okay, lads. Uh, this is a water filter I use. It's called the Catadine Pocket. Uh, it's virtually indestructible, lads. Uh, as I say, it's not the lightest filter. See, some of the writing's coming off. It's been that used that much. Some of the... It's not the lightest filter, but I tell you what, I don't think you'll ever get one more robust. I say it's gathered teas for 25 years or 20 years. I'm not too sure. Uh, but it's bulletproof. When you actually buy it, turn it round, you get all the tubing, um, and as I say, you don't get this part. This is a filter that I've added to it, which is catadine as well. It's a carbon filter and it just takes a taste, or improves the taste. As I say, using this filter, it's absolutely superb, you, you know, you can drink straight from it, but I say I just like the carbon on there just to, to improve the taste. You get a metal clip with it, that can attach straight to your water bottle, and as I say, pump it straight in. It pumps about a litre a minute, and there's nothing really to go wrong. Now, always that you do, you do get a little scrubbing don't know where to put it. You get a green light scourer with it and what you're supposed to do if you if you've used it in sedimented water 
I say you can use it in cloudy water, it does say that. If you've used it in that, just unscrew it uh, and, you know, clean the filter. I will unscrew it and show you, just wait there. Right lads, there's the uh, filter all unscrewed. So, I say, if that's dirty on the outside, just scrub it under your tap, clean it up and it's ready to go. I say, it's guaranteed for 20, 25 years, so it should outlive me. And how it works is, it's a hard one handed this. Obviously, that screws to there and that's, I'll show you the screw. That screws to there, that screws to there. And there's not really to go wrong with it, you just pump it in. Uh, that in there, you just throw in the water and this little flotation. You just adjust that flotation thing to the depth that you want. And so that's like a pre-filter and then it goes through the filter. As I say, I put the carbon bit on it at the end just to improve the taste. Uh, so that's a catadine pocket. Price-wise, they're retailing about 240, 250. I saw it on Amazon about 160. So I thought, well, it's 20 pound, 25 pound to replace filters on other systems that last about six months. The way I was using them. So I bought this, treating myself. As I say, I buy things that will usually last me a good few years. That's how my motto's been. I look after my kit. As I say, after every trip I come home, uh, I pack it up and it's ready for the next next uh, trip out. So that's a bit about the Catadyne pocket filter. It comes in its own bag. Uh, I'd say it weighs about a pound, pound and a half or something. And with that carbon thing, it's about a pound and a half. So, you know, but it's bulletproof, lads. It's absolutely bulletproof. So there's all my kit. I'll just give you a quick scout round, and then I'll pack it up and show it you in the bag. So there's me uh, cooker. I'm going to have that brew in a minute. There's my pillar. I say the old pound silver foil thing, which is pretty thick. Uh, that's the bed thing that comes with... I think they call it the duo mat that comes with my rucksack. There's my charger. That'll charge this iPhone for about four or five times. Probably four. My bivvy, my sleeping ba bag. Neo Air, Thermares Neo Air. That's a Marmot hydrogen bag. It's a Valde bivvy. Uh, my sleeping bag goes into this. Sea to Summit dry bag. The bivy bag packs up into the Valdi bivy bag. That's got compression straps on it. There's that little scourer for me uh, catadine filter. So that goes with there. Me rubbish that'll take with me. So that's about it, lads. Uh, the same little uh, Mef's Nalgene 4 ounce bottle, the windshield and the white box stove, and that's it lads. Uh, I've gone through everything, I've told you all the weights, I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, I don't just do the bushcraft thing, but as I say, over oh, my last couple of videos, I'm really, really enjoying it. and. Uh, you know, just what a laugh uh, to be with other people. As I say, this uh, hiking on the hills is very uh, isolated if you're on your own. You're usually uh, well up. But as I say, this bushcraft stuff, I'm loving it. You know, I'm, I want to learn everything about it if I can. And I say I'm in no rush to learn it. I'll just do it at my own little pace. And as I say, that uh, bushcraft show was uh, pretty good, I enjoyed that, uh, really did enjoy that and the guy who done the singing is Survivor Man, Les, Les Stroud, he was superb live, absolutely uh, 
Yeah, he surprised me anyway, and I think he surprised my mate, 51 Foxy. Superb. If any of you lads can get a meet-up or get together, you know, more than any, let's go for it. Uh, I say we did meet a few lads there. We met Barking Badger and his missus, uh, Jedi of the Night and his brother, Chewy Backer, we've nicknamed him now. So I think he should get his own YouTube channel up, that lad, and start showing us what he's up to. Uh, as I say, I've not been up the hills for about ooh, a good 12 months now. Uh, not that I'm not intending to go up ever again. I am. It's just that I fell in love with this camping in the woods bushcraft. And it amazes me the difference in gear. As I say, I've got quite a lot of gear out here. But, you know, when you weigh up, it's under £9 with the water filter. And then I've got a Polish sleeping mat <laughs> that I bought for bushcraft. And that's nine kilo just for the mat. <laughs> so it just amazes me the difference. But the thing about it is we're having a laugh and we're enjoying it. And that's what it's about, lads. Just get out and enjoy it. And if you get wet or, you know, you, you, you learn from your mistakes. Never be scared to make mistakes, you know. As I say, I've uh, I've made loads on my time, and first to admit it, you know, nobody's perfect. Even the survival instructors are learning new things all the time. And if they're not, then be honest, they're frigging liars. Everyone learns from it all the time. New tricks of the trade, as they say. So just get out, lads, and enjoy it, and let's see your videos from where you go camping, and let's see your mistakes as well. You know, just film a lot and let's see everything. You know, the, you, that's the only way to learn. But if you could have a get together, I know my mate Paul Fox, he's into his Dutch cooking now and he, he's done a loaf and he loved it. And, you know, the joy on his face to see it was brilliant. When he done that bread with his son and you could see the, the, the happiness and the, the joy, that little making a loaf, but doing it outdoors made it 100% better. And the, the smiles that I got, it come out of him and the joy he got and the self-satisfaction, that's, that's it, that's it, the nail on the head. The satisfaction that you get from just coming outside and listening to the sounds and being out here and the smells and the, you know, and everything. The smells of the wood burning and the smoke and, you know, the, when we was doing our Dutch cooking, we'd done a rabbit stew uh, one night and we'd done a curry the other night. And we just sat, just chatting about nothing. And it was brilliant and absolutely superb. So that's about, that's it for my rambling on, lads. I'm going to pack all this up now. I've only said I'm not staying out tonight. I've just brought it mainly to show... Um, Foxy's uh, son uh, because he's, he was thinking of getting a hoop biver. Now he was going to get one of the army ones and I said uh, just hold on I've got a Valdi one and uh, as a guy who uses it often or did used to use it often you know I couldn't recommend it enough and if you could see the weathers I've been out in it and I've been laying side there and I've just been happy as Larry. You know, it's uh, been superb. Right, I'll get gone. I've chatted enough now, lads. See you in a bit. Bye. Right, that's my roll mat rolled up. Uh, and just for some scale, lads, I've just put it against uh, a little uh, titanium spark. So, I say, that's it. It's not very big. Weighs 260 grams, but the insulation off it is superb. I say I protect it like mad. I have two mats underneath it. I'm just paranoid about puncturing it, but not done up to now, and I'm quite a hefty lad, so it's took my weight. What I find with them is you blow them up rock hard, and then once you lie on them, they hold you too rigid, so you have to let a bit of the air out. Uh, 
Well, that ain't a bad thing. It just shows you the quality of, that they're made to. So that's the Neo Air Small. Lads, got me brew now. Just a few final thoughts while uh, I say it's been lagging down for the last few days, so I've not really been out. Uh, let me brew. What should we have a little chat about? Yeah, about how come we bribe our outdoors? Uh, well, my name's Brian. <laughs> Funny this. And me and, I don't know if you do it yourself, lads, me and me girlfriend, we have little pet names for each other. She calls me Brybo, and her name's Caroline, and I call her Cazibo. Now, this was strictly private between me and my partner. No one else knew. Anyway, I went on a stag do. Went on a stag do to uh, Belgium. Uh, and try to think of where we went. Anyway, Belgium. We got the we got we got the ferry from Ulta Zeebrug, uh, Bruge it was Bruges. And um, anyway, uh, when we're on the ferry, my mate says, "Have you got a phone charger?" So I says, "Yeah, it's in my suitcase." I say we was a bit intoxicated at this time. Because we've been at the bike, it's an overnight ferry from Old to Zeebrucker. So I said, Yeah, it's in my suitcase. Uh, so he goes in my suitcase, pulls out the and he starts laughing. I said, What are you laughing at? He goes, Are you bribo? So I went, Penny dropped. Now, what I didn't know is that my girlfriend had put me a little love note in telling me how much you love me and I hope you have a good time but she put to my bribo or to my darling bribo so that was it obviously I was with about 30 or 40 lads so in the morning at breakfast I goes and I, you know started then didn't it I a bribo so it stuck lads even the kids and Everyone call me Bribo now, so that's the name Bribo. And the outdoors come about is because I'm outdoors. I didn't call it Bribo bushcraft or Bribo bell walking because I try. I do a bit of everything. I do a bit of carp fishing, which is outdoors. A bit of skiing, outdoors. Uh, bushcrafting, which is outdoors. The fell walking. Outdoors. So that was how I come about my name, Bribo Outdoors. So I hope that tickled you lads because, uh, as I say, the name's stuck now. So, <laughs> but uh, this YouTube, I find it brilliant, absolutely brilliant. If you want to learn anything, it's there. You know, lads are taking time to make videos and showing you and explaining stuff to you. And I hope you'd learn anything off me. It'll be a pleasure to to give some it back, you know, as I say, tips and whatever. I've shown you my, my lightweight kit of tape. Uh, now, when I've done the Pembrokeshire walk, uh, I took most of this kit, but I didn't take my divvy bag. I took uh, like a one-man tent. Or, no, a two-man tent. Uh, but I took the inside out, detached the inside and just used it as like a fly sheet type thing. But I'll do a review of that one day, show you the actual kit. I took a different pot because I wanted to obviously make meals. Uh, so I'll show you that kit one day. Um, but as I say, you know, that uh, the YouTube is brilliant. Absolutely love it to death. I'm always watching different channels and that'll be nice next year. The Bushcraft Show in 2013 because the more people who uh, come, as I say, 
Jedi of the night is going to try and do the full weekend. Barking Badger's definitely going to do the full weekend. I'm going to do the full weekend. Paul 51 Fox is going to do the full weekend. Uh, I think Funky Prepper said he's going to come down. As I say, the more the merrier. You know, we'll, we'll get a big fire going, get the Dutch ovens going. We all chip into food. You know, we can have a curry one night, big stew the next. Foxy can do a loaf. He'll have it mastered by then, or his son will anyway. And we won't forget the butter this time. <laughs> oh, perfect loaf and forgot butter, eh? 100 lines for that one, bravo. But yeah, it's magic. As I say, I'll talk to you all day, mate. I love it. Love being out. I'll say this is the first chance uh, from the bushcraft show to get out because it's been lagging down every day. Um, and as I say, I've, I've, I don't know if you've seen it on my video, but when we was at the bushcraft show, um, on the Sunday, because it was lagging it down, there was hardly anyone attending the stall, so I had a good, we had a look around me and Foxy, and we got talking to a guy who does the wood carving. Anyway, he chopped us a bit of wood up for uh, Elder, so I started carving a spoon. Now, I've got as far as I can go with me more a knife, because I haven't got what they call a crook spoon, but I think for Father's Day, I'm getting a crook spoon, so I'll carry on with it then. Uh, I'll sand it all down and I'll I'll show you the result, lads. Uh, so that's one of my projects. Another thing that I seem to got an interest in is the, is the leather craft. Uh, as I say, uh, I went to the identity store at the Bushcraft Show and found it really interesting and watched, uh, I think it's Lois Orford. Ben Orford's wife or partner, he does the, um, the knives, first class knives, and she does the sheets, and she was doing a leather demonstration. But I think that's another thing I wouldn't mind getting into. But I say, I'm in no rush. Uh, it'll, come, it'll come, I bought a bit of gear, but I've not used it yet. Uh, I'm in no rush to use it. I'll, I'll do it in my own time. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to show you some of that. That's it, you know, I'm not saying I'll be any good at it, but it interests me. I like the carving interests me. And like I keep saying, it doesn't matter if you're no good. Just have a go. Just have a go, lads. And if, any, if I can help anyone, just PM me. You know, if you want to know some information about my kit or anything like that, just PM me. I'll... I'll divulge everything, I'll gladly tell you anything. If, if I know the answers, I'll give it to you. But if you don't, if I don't know the answers, I'm sure someone on YouTube will. You know, it's like an encyclopedia by a click of a button. And the community that it's brought and new friends. As I say, I've only been on YouTube a couple of months. Uh, and as I say, I've met a few people now and talked to a few people over the internet and Skype, that Skype, uh, and it's brilliant. As I say, I've been up to see 51 Fox here, and we had a belting weekend, done nothing but laugh and eat, and uh, it's, just <laughs> it's just so different from how I'm used to going out and camping like, you know, and I love it, it's brilliant, you know, never channel yourself into one thing of interest, I think you're too, what's the word, too focused on one thing, as you get older, I say when I was younger it was the hills, the hills, the hills, and, uh, but now I'm old, a bit older, a bit wiser I suppose, it's just being out, it's everything. I say this bushcraft I'm into in a big time at the moment. Uh, but I still uh, still will go up and into the hills. I love it. But I say the people you meet, brilliant. I say we've met 51 Fox here. 
met Jedi of the night and his brother. Oh, I just want to say one thing to his brother. Thank you for that single malt, my friend. I will replay, repay the compliment next year. As I say, I don't really drink. I used to. I used to like a good pint, but I just uh, never really bothered like that. But that single malt, absolutely first class. I don't know what it was, but it was damn beautiful. So, my turn next year, lad. I'll get the malt in. Uh, I'm sure... 51 Foxy enjoyed his cigar from you, Jedi of the night, so I'm sure he'll thank you personally for that. As I say, I don't smoke, so uh, didn't. he did offer me one, but I say I don't don't smoke. Never smoke, so didn't interest me that. But a single malt, beautiful. We met Barking Badger and his missus. Pleasure to meet you two as well. So YouTube has not only opened up information, it's, it's opened up more friendships. And as far as I'm concerned, it's brilliant. Right, old lads, that's it for me now. We'll pack up because I promised uh, my good lady that we're going to get the tandoor out and do a nice roast in there and a nice tea. See you soon. Okay lads, there's everything packed up and it's in the 25 litre rucksack. Uh, as I say, full weight of that is probably about eight and a half, nine pound. So that's all my gear review and the equipment I take when I'm heading up the tops of the hills. See you now, bye.